Good afternoon. This is Tom Aspey with the Viper Report. It's Tuesday, September 1st. We're starting off a new month, and this is not me in this picture and not really how I feel about the market. Though, given the spectacular results in August, the FOMO, the fear of missing out, is growing amongst many investors. It appears that some are expecting another equally strong month, though last August was the best August since 1984. Very unlikely we will get that kind of a month. Analyzing risk and alerting my readers and clients to that risk is one of the jobs I try to fulfill. That's why early in the year, January and February, I had articles like historically overbought market, very high risk, etc., if you uh, Google Forbes Tom Asprey, you can see all the stuff I've written since then and you get an idea of what I do. This was a chart from my analysis before Monday's open. You can see this is Spider Trust. It tracks the S&P 500. Uh, quick rundown of what these indicators are. These are the Stark bands. They tell you when the market is high or low risk. So back in June in here, we got there to the lower bands. That was a low risk time to buy, a high risk time to sell. Similarly, in late June, we had another low-risk buying opportunity. When we're bumping up near the upper bands like we are as of last Friday's close, that means the market is ready for a pullback. Below that, we have the S&P 500 AD line, which had broken support a week and a half ago and has not yet made new highs. This is something we are watching. This is a slight change in my outlook. Since this July 4th article, Investors Bearish as Stock Market Soars, where I pointed out that the high bearish sentiment of many investors was a bullish sign for the stock market, as was the very strong advanced decline numbers, which pointed sharply higher. As I pointed out in last week's column on Forbes.com, this was one of the reasons I've become more cautious. This, we have an S&P 500 chart up here. Down there is the number of stocks above their 20-day EMA, the number of S&P stocks. And you can see it's been declining. All right, so this is a, a sign of deterioration. We saw a very similar formation as line B in January and February of this year, and we all know what happened. Below there, we have the number of stocks above the 50-day. Similar sort of patterns, lower highs, line C, a sharp correction. And now we're seeing a similar divergence. Now, I'm not looking for anywhere near what we saw in March, but it does suggest the market is vulnerable. I try to take profits on strength rather than being stopped out. These are some of the trades we've closed out in the past week and a half or so. Healthcare, we were initial long here, we 8.9% 8 .8 profit. We had sold out an earlier half, we're still holding a core long position. Materials, trading position. We were in there probably for about uh, five weeks, 10%. Spider Trust was really short term. We've been teaching you how to use hourly charts. Currently, as of Monday, we got back in the IWM, but we're risking like under 2%. And after today's close, we'll probably raise that stop further. Vanguard REIT, that's a high yielding thing. My philosophy is that a trade doesn't work out in a allotted period of time, which this one didn't. I cut the position in half. So... You know, we were long, you know, from 81.48, we closed it out at 81.62 for a tiny, you know, mi minuscule profit, but we reduced the exposure in VNQ. It remains to be seen whether that was a good idea or not, but we'll keep it posted. Uh, also, the XLP, the consumer staples, we took a 9% profit there, and we had a trading position in the Russell, which we also closed out. Last Thursday, we had some new recommendations in both the Spider Gold Trust, that's the GLD, and this SLV, the Silver Trust. We'd taken some real nice profits in July, looking for a setback. We think that setback is over. So we got in as of yes, midday yesterday, up almost 2% in GLD and over 4% in SLV. We need to see even further strength to confirm that uh, we're heading higher and new highs are likely. These are our current positions. They're all part of the Viper ETF. Right now, we don't see a lot of investment opportunities. We see more trading opportunities. So if we can be fortunate enough to take a quick 8 to 10% profit in four to six weeks, 
a year long time that really adds up of course we get the jobs report this Friday then a long weekend should be interesting and typically as I pointed out in the recent Forbes.com post seasonally September is kind of a rough month so I hope you read the article there's a link in the email if you have questions you can always email me at Tom at ViperReport.com and of course if you want specific stock advice you can go to the Viper ETF here that's on the ViperReport.com site or the hot stocks link $34.95 get at least two issues a week plus interim updates plus six trading lessons easily a $45 value Look forward to hearing from you and we'll touch base with you over the long weekend. Thanks.